Welcome, everybody. Hey, my name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. Um, I'm not just the owner. Everybody who volunteers here supports us, uh, the animals here, uh, we're all the owner. I don't own anything. It's just I've helped um, design the mission. And it is a mission of my work um, and a passion of mine for at least the past decade of my life. Um, hey, Kelly, how are you? So, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We are an international educational center where we teach people online um, about how to raise the bar for animals under our care um, through using uh, applied behavior analysis and positive reinforcement. Um, for those that know, Hey everyone, for those that know and follow us, our main mission here is to raise the bar in how we care for animals and help spread that education to people who want to know more. Um, I solely am based around animal enrichment and before I go any further, happy National Bird Day. Perfect timing. So anyways, our primary goal here is enrichment. Um, in enrichment, how I determine it or how I define it is an arousal of the senses and um, keeping animals mentally and physically engaged. And look who's coming up behind me. Um, perfect timing. Happy National Bird Day. This is Rocky. Hi, Rocky. Come up here. Come over here. People want to see you. So I'm going to give you a tour of some of the things we do here and why. I will focus primarily today on the birds because it is National Bird Day. I'm a big promoter of enrichment because it gives the animal choice, especially if they're living in environments where their choices are limited. Um, and we do that, <laughs> get up here. And we do that through um, teaching animals how to forage for their food, how to look for information. Because if that mental and physical stimulation... Hi, Rocky. Hi, baby. How are you doing? What? Just on time. So if that animal is learning through enrichment, it's providing choice to that animal. Um, if they're the more choices you provide to animals, the more sense of a control they feel they have within their environment. The more sense of control and more choices they have, the more empowered that animal. Um, my main mission in the work that I do is to empower animals. Um, no, matter, no matter where they are um, and um, help provide people the information they need. So this is Rocky Valentine and this is where we were sitting the other day. Um, and I, I'm starting here because I want to show you perspective. Nice job, Rock. This is Rocky. Here's our education Moluccan cockatoo. He's 19 years old. We've had him for nine years. Um, he is... Hi. He is the primary mascot behind the reason the Animal Behavior Center exists. And I've decided when I, I had the Animal Behavior Center's name picked out for many years, because ABC also stands for Antecedent Behavior Consequence. That is the foundation behind the work that we do. We train a lot of animals, and um, studies show that if you're effectively and accurately using, a, using positive reinforcement training, it is the animal's preferred form of enrichment. Now, that, that is why I train. And, but I can't be training all the time Animals need more enrichment than just interaction with people because people are gone for long periods of time. And one of the main things I do is show people how to keep your animal enriched during times when you aren't there. Um, I'm really big on creating, having the animal be raised independent and being fine without you being home. And I do that through shaping and foraging and through shaping, foraging, and interacting with other animals. That is why I have these two cockatoo cages this close to each other. Um, 
<laughs> Rocky's a hottie. <laughs> You're a hottie, Rocky. Uh, we call him Rocky Valentine for several reasons. And I'm going to stand up and show you perspective of this cage and where his enrichment is, is because the only enrichment you're seeing right here at this point is me, our interaction together. I am sitting low in Rocky's cage because he is right beside me at my desk. This is where I work, and I have two perches on either side of me, so the cockatoos can sit here with me and engage with me. And I want them this close together because they can engage with each other. And if they can engage with each other, that means they have something else to interact with on times that I'm not here, in addition to the other people that are um, volunteer here at the center center in addition to all the enrichment they have inside of their enclosure so let me back up and show you um, this is Rocky our 19 year old Moluccan cockatoo he's the one um, that was going to be that suggested to be put down for his behavior issues that is why he's the mascot here of the center because he was a bird misunderstood there's a lot of animals whose um, behaviors are misunderstood. Those behaviors exist because they serve a purpose for that animal. So he is our mascot because he can now be handled by anybody, everybody, um, and he has a story to tell. So let me back up and show you perspective on where I'm sitting. So here's his cage. There's not a lot of um, other enrichment at the bottom of his cage beside me, besides me, and there's a reason for that. It's because Rocky does not like to sit low in his cage. There are windows right here, and he, based on his behavior, he is not comfortable sitting low. He never has been. So the perspective that I didn't show you is what all is up here, because that's where he lives primarily, up there. Um, the Animal Behavior Center is a 10,000 square foot educational center and we use all 10,000 square feet. I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see the perspective of where I was sitting. So there's where I was sitting. There is one of my several desks. There is Rocky. Here's the other cage, or the other perch. Now let me back up. So each one of these cages is custom made and custom designed, and we did that around the individual bird, okay? So I can't even back up far enough to get his whole enclosure in here. Um, the reason this enclosure is not in my house is because it's about half, <laughs> it's about the whole size of my living room. So we keep him in this enclosure for his safety. He's going to go down to the ground. Um, but I'm trying to give you perspective. Perch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We put perches and we design and enrich each cage, or each perch around each cage based on how the bird moves. So everything is based on, nothing is based on birds as a whole because I'm not gonna get stuck in that trap. Um, and I'm not gonna do that injustice to the individual bird. We design each cage, each toy, each perch placement based on the bird's wingspan, the length of their tail, so they can flap their wings without their wings hitting the cage bars um, or other perches in the cage because that is an aversive and it will punish the behavior of them flapping their wings and they need that exercise. That is how oxygen is pumped through the bones of the individual bird. So we have a couple of birds here that are in, in our homes or facilities. Um, cockatoos are known to be pluckers and I have done everything I can to try to take any type of stress or anxiety out of the individual bird's life. Um, and we do that through training and shaping and foraging and enrichment. So here I am standing inside a Rocky's cage. You see that his lowest perch, this is about, reaches about the middle of my head. Um, so this is his lowest perch in his cage. All of his perches are high because 
that's where Rocky likes to be. We, we design everything around the individual bird. Right, Rock? So there he is. If I'm not sitting there at that desk, he doesn't hang out on that perch. Um, and even if I did put different enrichment around in this area, he would not interact with it. He would prefer to interact with me. So in each animal's lives, we try to keep balance. I don't care if that's birds, dogs, um, fish, what else, uh, pigs, the different animals that I work with at zoos. Um, it's all about balance. I can't be here for the bird all the time. I don't want to be there for the bird all the time because if I am, it's not setting the bird up for success. It's not setting the animal up for success. I'm focusing on birds today because it is National Bird Day. Let me take you around. So you can see Rocky is now completely um, satisfied with interacting with this particular toy that is designed by volunteers here at the Animal Behavior Center. Um, and they are designed by these individual volunteers who put a lot of time and effort into these toys uh, based on watching each individual animal's interaction, what they prefer. So let me show you some of the outside of the cage. So here you'll see when a toy is destroyed, we hang it on the outside of the cage to let the volunteers know this toy needs to be um, refilled, redesigned, and put back in a cage. Uh, we go through each. So here's Crystal designing a new toy. Um, who is this toy for, Crystal? This is for Kronos because he likes to pull things out and cast them away in other places. So we make sure we have lots of crinkle paper, paper towels, things like that. There's a couple dry noodles in there. Um, and mixed in with that, we have the reward for him for doing all of this hard work, which are the pieces of dog food since he's an African pied crow and he values that treat very much. So, look, <laughs> and he's already so coming over. Yeah. So here's, are you going to go put it in his cage? I can, yeah. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put you on the spot. Well, where do you want it hung? Because um, I think normally we keep it back in that corner. We do. Why don't we stick it in the left corner, but hang it at a height that he can he can get to it? Yeah. Okay. So here is Kronos. He's an African pied crow. He's here from Indian Creek Zoo. We do take in different animals um, from different zoos based on... Um, our time and availability and if we can keep them properly enriched on an individual basis. Okay, so you'll see um, this is Kronos, the African Pied Crow, and he's going to his perch. So um, Crystal's asking him to station so she can enter his enclosure. Now this is Kronos. When he first came here, he was afraid of hands, afraid of people. You couldn't get near close to him. Um, well, you could, but we've worked on that on a daily basis. So here we're working on, now see he's flying towards her versus away from her. And we've done that through consistent training and effective use of applied behavior analysis. Uh, we've intentionally, um, like I say, predictability has its place. Uh, we will be predictable with an animal in the beginning. And then we start mixing that up. We don't like things becoming um, routine so he is right next to her that is months of dedicated work so we are thanks crystal yeah. we are huge on enrichment because you can see Kronos followed crystal towards the out of the cage crystal can't stay in that cage crystal has a life too um, Kronos prefers her to stay in the cage, but we, he, we need him to have balance um, for a successful and healthy future. So this is why we provide enrichment, and enrichment provides choice for the animal. Enrichment also provides, the animal has control over their environment. Even there, if they're in an environment with limited, limited, control, limited opportunities, um, so here we also, we don't do the same redundant toys all the time because if a toy is not touched or interacted with in three days, we get it out of the cage because it's no longer enrichment, it's just an object. It's an object taking up space that the animal doesn't have the time 
uh, or, or the animal doesn't have the interest to learn from it. So that's right, Rocky. So here you see Kronos is actively engaging. So we'll continue to uh, increase complexities on a daily basis. Um, Crystal and Karen have been here. Hi. There's Karen. I'm trying to zoom out. Um, Crystal and Karen have been here for several hours. We have different people that come in every day and our primary focus is animal enrichment. Keep that animal busy, occupied, and hopefully that is why we are here for you. Um, and to show you different areas where we do struggle, where the animal's struggling. How do we solve this uh, potential behavior concern? This is Levi, our deaf dog. Quincy, our Rottweiler, where'd snow go? Oh, there's snow. Yeah, there's snow, our deaf and blind puppy. Um, so anyways, I we have several different people that come in here on a daily basis. Karen has been with us for, she's the manager here, she's been with us for four years, almost four years. Yeah, almost. Uh, now, has it? I mean, the Animal Behavior Center will be four years old in February. Well, then I've been here about four years. Okay. Because I just... Right started when right when you open. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and Karen, okay, so Karen comes in here. Karen works on the Animal Behavior Center when she is not here. <laughs> um, she's been with us the longest, and um, if there's any kind of complication here, I don't even have to ask Karen. She just shows up, and or she puts the people together to do what needs to be done on a daily basis to keep the animals happy, exactly. healthy, yep, and keep behavior in balance. So, let me ask you, Karen. Uh huh. Why are you, what do you like about being here? Because you obviously like it because you spend so much time mm -hmm. here. Well, I mean, I love animals to begin with. I wouldn't be here if I didn't love animals. But to see these animals so happy and so enriched. You're saying we love Karen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, it's just cool. Like Rico, he's, he's chilling out playing with the toy that we made. I mean, you know, when... When Rico gets going, we clap and yell, and we're, we're all happy. We all enjoy being here. And just to see these animals happy, and because of a lot of their situations, you know, it's like they're happy where they're at. And I think, Lara, you do an amazing job like no one else could ever do. So thank you, Karen. I appreciate that, and it couldn't be possible without all the hard work you put in here on a daily basis. Thank you. So before I start crying, <laughs> <laughs> and me too, <laughs> you have to love being here or you wouldn't put the time in here. Um, because on a daily basis, this isn't necessarily easy. Um, it isn't easy. We get to get the phone calls of that put the pits in your stomach that keep you awake at 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. That you're wondering, how is that animal doing? What can we do? Could we have done something better? Um, so I want to move on and show different birds. And here's Crystal. Crystal, how? Yes. Crystal has moved into high gear here at the oh, Animal yeah. Behavior yeah. Center. Yes, she has. <laughs> She, um, Crystal, you've been with us for how many months? Oh, I think I came on beginning of October. That's all? October. Yeah, you know what? End of it, September. It was right before the October event. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, started making enrichment and love watching them all destroy it. Like, Kronos has already emptied it and now he's getting ready to put new things in it, which is great. Yep. So um, now he's going to use it as caching. He's going to go cash. Mm -hmm valued items in there. Yep. So yeah. why, what do you like about the Animal Behavior Center besides snow? I mean, look at that. No, it's, it's really wonderful. It's, um, as a creative person, it gives me an opportunity to take the two things that I love, which is like art and being creative and animals, and making all of these different enrichment items for them to watch them really flourish and watch them learn and it's just infinitely fascinating i mean what we can learn from them too and to see how we can all coexist on this wonderful planet and yeah it's it's a blast yeah it's a blast. Thanks. it's yeah. It, that 
you coming here has been a godsend to us. In well, many I, ways. Would I would just be here all the time if I didn't, you know, have other things to do. Yeah. Yeah. So let me show you. This will give you a better perspective because Rico and Rocky's cage is about the same size. So I have to back up this far. Now, let me tell you, my point is not to um, make anybody feel bad because they cannot provide the size cages that we do because that is not our point. That is not the point beside into the size cage we have. The point in the size of the cages we have is because I travel a lot giving uh, workshops and presentations across the United States and overseas showing, helping people um, understand animal behavior, um, how to interact with them through applied behavior analysis and positive reinforcement and enrich their lives. So I'm gone, not a lot, but when I'm gone, I can be gone for a long period of time. So that's why I've designed these cages from Corners Limited um, based on the individual bird and how they navigate. Um, so anyways, it's not about the size of the space that's important. That's the most important. The most important is what is that animal doing within that space. So I've seen some very enriched birds in cages um, less than a quarter of this size because the, the cages are filled with enrichment based on that individual animal. So here's Rico that was interacting with one of his toys and we create complexity by how the toy is hung. Um, the easier the, the easier the enrichment, the harder place, the place we'll put it that's a little tougher for the animal to get to, like that one right there. So he can destroy that wire basket and its contents fairly quickly, but not when he's hanging on a swing and trying to keep his balance with one foot. So like I said, um, I don't ever try to make enrichment too tough for the animal. I do try to create a challenge because we all work for a reason. We all have hobbies for a reason and that's because it keeps our mind stimulated. That is why we do what we do with the animals here, especially the birds and the people. <laughs> We're plenty enriched. <laughs> so it's not just about animals providing us fun, it's are we paying that back to the animal? Because the animal here, um, are we giving back to the animal what we can? Yeah. And look at <laughs> Snow. He obviously, she obviously, she's our deaf and blind puppy, is extremely enriched here. So I want to show you, here's Suki's enclosure. Suki has uh, one of the smallest enclosures here, but it's designed around Suki. How she moves, what she enjoys, what she prefers. It's based around Suki. So you guys saw I was just in her enclosure doing recall. Um, her perches are set up based on what what Suki prefers. Okay, here's Murray. Murray's perches and his toys are based around the size of his wings and the size of his tail. So you'll see perches more spread out in here. That is because and he is our only bird here that does not fly. And that is based, so this cave, this enclosure is based around that. So he will have perches further out from the side of the enclosure and right there. So he can move and get that clearance for that big, beautiful tail. So if a bird comes here, not engaging with enrichment. There's Rocky. Not engaging with enrichment. That is the first thing, that's the top goal, uh, our, our priority here, is getting that animal engaged um, in learning. So you'll see here we have perches up high on the outside of the cages. That's in case we have birds out and we have people here that don't understand them and want to reach for them. We give them a place to go where people cannot reach. So we give that bird a place to get away for people who do not understand bird body language. 
Um, we're not based just around birds. Oh, I was gonna get Rocky out. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, let's get Rocky out. Because I want to show you we're big into moving animals around to different places. Rocky can so this perch is way above my head. I gotta stand on my tiptoes. You gonna come with me? I'm one-handed. You'll see the X's on the ground. That's for the mammals. It tells the mammals where to go because we can't have them in enclosures because it's a dangerous Hi, place. Hi, Rocky. Hello. Bye -bye. Hi, Rocky. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi. 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 So we built this PVC play stand, hanging play gym here for the birds. This is one way where we can get them used to, keep them hey. used to change. Hi. Hi. He's, obs he's fascinated with somebody at this point. So we're looking. <laughs> I can't oh, wonder who that I is. just love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this perch sitting low. And that is, will somebody take the camera while I, or if you want to get him. Oh, here. whatever. Let me just get him up here. So I just want to show, we don't. Um, Hi. The importance is in keeping them moving from area to area. Go ahead. Because if they stay in the same area in, uh, in stagnant environments, nice job, dude. Um, they stay in stagnant, stagnant, thanks Karen, mm -hmm. stagnant environments, um, you're gonna see a reflection on that, on their behavior. So let me take you out to show you some other birds. Oh, you know what? I might as well enrich a bird or two while I'm out here to show you some different spaces that we have here. Hi. So we work with a lot of different animals, not just birds, but because today is National bird day let's focus on the birds so here is a third area that the animals get to move to um, there is cello our education roller pigeon and there is Willoughby um, education turkey vulture here from nature's nursery Cello, you want to come up here nice job so I believe this 10,000 square foot space gives them an area and choice for changing environment. Good. Um, but when we bring them out here, guess where they prefer to be? Yeah, right there. <laughs> On us. And that is because we've, we've developed a relationship through them through the type of training that we do. Training is communication. What are you communicating? Whether that animal can see, hear, or smell you, you are training it whether you realize it or not. The key question is, what are you training it to do? Um, so, like I said, they have all this choice in, in where to fly, but the key is, it's not necessarily about the size of the space, it's what, is, what do you have inside that space. Because when I bring the birds out here, guess where they like to be? Right here, right here. <laughs> because we've built that relationship with them. Um, we've built that form of trust and respect with them. Um, when Cello came to us, he didn't fly to hands. Now he wants to be with us because we've created that positive association with him. Um, so, like I said, this place, oops, sorry, this place can get really boring really fast. It's not about the size of the environment. It's about what's within it. And that's why we are focused heavily on enrichment. That's right, cello. So, um, before I end, I'll take you one other place that we take the birds. Um, this is Willie, Education Turkey Vulture. I'll take you one other place. We have four different places where we can, based on the individual bird, based on the individual behavior, where we can move them from day to day. And we're all about moving all the animals here. 
We want the dogs in there. We need them separated. We need, when they're separated, we want them enriched because we want them to be comfortable uh, with being alone because sometimes they're gonna have to be alone whether you want to or not. I don't know what beyond tomorrow brings. I don't know what tomorrow brings, so I am trying to set my animals up for a very successful future um, in case they have to be moved. So here's another area. This is our training room. This is where I do a lot of live streams um, on a daily basis. We'll move animals and birds in here. Um, we'll take uh, mammals out back. We take mammals out front. We take mammals in the backyard. We move them, we'll put them in the house um, just to keep them used to that change. Will Kronos be able to fly out there? Yes, that is our end goal. We're on a countdown. We have a couple months before he has to go back to the zoo, but I am working on getting him on the hand and doing recall training before I take him outside of his enclosure because if he is not recall trained, how am I gonna get him out of the raptors out there? So that's why um, we do the things we do in the series of steps we do here. So this is a painting drawn by, painted by the awesome Bonnie Zimmerman with the Indonesian Parrot Project. There's a shout out to you. Um, but yes, the importance is keeping the animals moving and shifting so environments don't get stagnant. Because when they get stagnant, you wanna go in there? Are you going in there? <laughs> because when environments get stagnant, that's when you'll see behavior issues skyrocket, okay? Um, so before I end this, before I end this live stream, I just wanna say thank you. I wanna give a huge shout out to all of our supporters who support the work we do online. Um, thank you. And don't for one minute think if we don't respond that we're not watching because we are. So thank you. And thank you guys for all the hard work you do here. No problem. <laughs> Along with Angie Knaneline, Lindsay Douglas, Sandy Pratt, Michelle and Wes Peel. Um, am I forgetting anybody? I don't think so. <laughs> it's hard to put on the spot. Um, yeah, so we have dedicated people coming in here just for enrichment. But as they see, they slowly get shifted to moving into training and helping. Oh, Margaret. <laughs> Margaret, we love you. We love you, Margaret. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you to everybody for your support. We appreciate it, and we thank you for helping you um, help spread our mission, which is raising the bar in how we care for our animals. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it, and happy National Bird Day. Peekaboo! I think that's a good note to end.